Hey everybody, this is Spaceman Spiff, and let's start this audio commentary. So today I was against a human player, and you can see I drew Orc. Um, but again, I did not pay attention, and for some reason I was absolutely convinced this game that I was against an undead player. And that's something I like, because I really enjoy playing Orc against undead, and I have uh, a kind of unique strategy, I think, for it, which I definitely intend to showcase at some point. But either way, I'm going to open with that build, thinking I'm against an undead player, but really I'm against a human, as we saw. Anyway, so here we are. It's Twisted Meadows. This is um, a great map, a classic map. Everyone is very familiar with this map. And against an undead player, which is what I think I'm against, right? I'm uh, expecting a Death Knight and Fiends or a Death Knight to come harassing. I like to play a Shadow Hunter first against undead. I do it actually quite a bit. Shadow Hunter first with uh, Head Hunters. That's my standard build. So you can see that's what I'm doing here. I've got my Altar of Storms going up my burrow. I'm going to be building a war mail soon. Apparently we're, we're all pros in one versus one, so I, I'm happy with that. As long as we're all pros, life is good, right? <clears throat> um, but there, there goes my war mail, and now as soon as I have the gold, I should probably cancel these peons to build the barracks right now. I'm sure I will do that shortly. And you can see I'm going Shadow Hunter first. So this is a Shadow Hunter first game against a human player. I haven't scouted yet, you'll notice. That's you know, one of my weaknesses. I mentioned it in a previous commentary. I don't like scort scouting as orc. I feel like peons are so slow and I like to have specific resource timings even though I always screw it up anyway. So, I didn't scout. I also don't like the undead to know that I'm orc, right? I, I like the undead to be a little blind and make him do the scouting. So, either way, I'm sitting here. I've got my barracks going up. This build, the the Shadow Hunter comes out before you have any headhunters, and I did screw up the build order a little bit. It should be faster. But either way, your Shadow Hunter does come out quite <clears throat> quite a bit before your first headhunter. So I get I get Hex first, because Hex is a great spell at level one and actually really great at deflecting harassment. Um, we'll see how it plays out. But I'm I'm able to creep this green camp. You know, e easily enough. I'm going to take some damage. I have to spend some mana, but at least I'm doing something. You can see here the, the human scouted me. So now I know I'm against a human and I'm a little bit scared. That's that's never a good sign. I've committed to this build, so I, I thought I'd still get a couple headhunters, but you'll notice I, I do qu uh, quickly switch over to grunts. I can't go exclusively headhunters against a human player. The game just... That's, that's really hard. That's really hard. And Shadowhunter first is also difficult. So now I'm already knowing that I'm in a predicament. And this game, this is kind of, I was leading into how I want to introduce this game, is not to really showcase a strategy. Because this is not a good strategy. I don't advise going Shadowhunter headhunters against a human player. Just because defend is so eff efficient against them. The water elements do great. Mountain King just melts headhunters. The spellcasters do great, area of effect. It's really hard to pull something like this off against a human player. So this strategy is more, or sorry, this video is more to showcase reacting and and playing from behind and trying to make the most of, of what you have. Because that's really where I am. I feel like already I'm playing kind of from behind. So you see, I've now got a, I've got two headhunters out, a third one on the way. There goes this peasant again, scouting around. And I'm able to creep this pretty pretty efficiently as well. It's it's kind of similar to the Dreadlord Ghoul strategy, where you sleep a level 5 creep and, it, and can therefore get through a creep camp you otherwise wouldn't be able to, because X is very effective against level 5 creeps. So you see, I, I do have to micro a little bit. He's, he's still tough, and I don't have a lot of damage output yet. But uncontested, I'm able to take it out pretty easily. And even if a Death Knight shows up, with three headhunters focusing a Death Knight and Hex, I'm... 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 It's stronger than people expect. It always surprises me how efficiently I can hold off or harass with, with this strategy. Also, the skeletons from the Rod of Necromancy die very quickly when focused with headhunters. But you see now, I, I've teched. I'm on three burrows. I should go to a 50 food at some point, but there's no rush at this at this point. And I'm building grunts. So three headhunters I thought was enough. Uh, he did build a scout farm here and here, so that was frustrating for me. But I managed to <clears throat> to pull them out and, and creep this anyway. Terrible play. I probably should have stayed over here to try and hide hide myself. 
But instead, I thought, <clears throat> I guess I thought I'd get away with it. This is uh, ill-advised. But I, you see, even even this cram, I'm I'm doing all right. As long as you can hex the ogre or magi, this this camp's all of a sudden not so dangerous. So I'm getting away with it. I'm getting some kills. I am trying to fight outside of the sight range of the farm now, even though he did see me before. And and he he's going to capitalize on that. So any second now, the human player is going to come walking through right here. Where is he? I bought a clarity potion for my shadow hunter because mana is very important to holding off any harassment. You need hex, and here he comes. So he's weak, he's clearly been power creeping. But look, I hex, throw some damage on, and now the Mountain King's gotta run away. <laughs> um, he's got enough for a storm bolt, so he's gonna try something. I use a speed scroll because I thought, ooh, I could kill him, but he got the storm bolt off at the perfect time to block me. And he's wearing boots of speed, which which are just enough to let him escape. But really, I almost if he didn't have those boots of speed, which typically a Mountain King wouldn't have, um, I would have had a kill there, right? Or had forced a teleport. So at this point, I come through. This is my first time seeing his base, so I initially thought he was up here because of his initial farm. But <clears throat> he played it well. He was over here, and this is my first time scouting his base. I didn't see much, but I saw it was it was a layout that was going to be hard for me to break into right now. So I pulled back, and he gives me a sad face. I've used the clarity potions. Now I'm coming back up. <clears throat> I've got a reasonable army. I've got three grunts, three head unders. I maybe I'll pause for a second here, and I'm tacking to tier three. So, what does it mean when you see a mountain king? It means the human player is probably not trying to go spellcasters, right? Because brilliance aura is so important, and sorceresses and priests just—it's self-explanatory. I don't need to get into this. But <clears throat> that meant I was probably going to be facing griffins or some kind of cheese strategy or maybe some expansions with lots of towers. It, there's still a lot of possibilities, but one thing I'm pretty confident in is it's not casters. He could still get an Archmage second, but then it's behind and vulnerable. So I thought I can try and capitalize on that. I <clears throat> immediately teched to tier 2 upon... I mean, to tier 3 upon hitting tier 2, and I built a Spirit Lodge. That's it. I'm still building Grunts and Berserker Strength at this point, and I have a Torrent Chieftain coming out second, because a Torrent Chieftain is great against human, and Endurance Aura is great, and I just I want to keep some pressure up right now. So I was going to go for Shaman. So you're going to see, I, I immediately upon finishing this, I'm going to research Adept Training, because... Bloodlust against humans is amazing if they don't have the answer for it, right? I was thinking he's going he's not gonna have two arcane sanctums with spell breakers coming, and if he does have them coming, they're not gonna have uh, brilliance aura beyond level one if he has an archmage. So there's gonna be a window in there where bloodlust is strong, right? Because it, it really hard counters slow. I feel like I can I, I, I don't know the actual numbers, but I'm pretty sure that Bloodlust makes you move faster than slow makes you slower. And either way, it, it really evens out th those battles. And he doesn't have slow. So I was thinking I would, I would try that, and in order to get away with my tech, because it leaves you very vulnerable while you're going for it, I need to keep him busy. I don't want him on my base, I don't want him creeping for free, so I, I decided to come and, and keep him busy. Try and get some damage on his economy. Just just not let him do what he wants to do. Keep him uncomfortable. So you'll notice I did take this path instead of this path to hit, which is the longer route, but I didn't want him to see me coming along the way. I wanted a little bit of the element of surprise, and it's kind of working for me, right? His Mountain King is in position, but I don't think he saw it coming. Uh, so he goes for another Storm Bolt on my Shadow Hunter, but it's, it's just not enough. And his footmen are not looking great here. I focus him down as soon as he uses defend. You'll notice I switch my headhunters to attack the Mountain King because they just, they're just they so inefficient against defended footmen. Make sure you ha attack anything else. Grunts can still do whatever, though. And you see, I went for the Mountain King. He managed to escape and buy a Potion of Healing. And now we're over here. We're doing all right. Orc, hero, or, sorry, orc units are definitely tougher than human units early on, so I'm doing well here. Able to micro away my Grunt really easily. And his, I don't, I mean, sorry, his, his Mountain King can't do a whole lot right now. Hex, at the early stage, 
slowed him down enough that he can't get the jump on me now, just because he was strapped for mana and he was always on the back foot low in health. And I managed to save another headhunter. That was a big Mountain King kill for me, obviously, and that's that's kind of game changing. It it swings the tempo in my direction a lot, but it doesn't <clears throat> doesn't do a whole lot for me. He does have a second hero out now, and he got an Archmage, so. He will have Brilliance Aura at some point, but not yet, I see. So I still have the jump on him, and uh, he's going Tier 3 with no Arcane Sanctums. So I know Bloodlust is still going to be very effective. Uh, I managed to get another kill here, I imagine. Do I have Hex? I don't have enough mana for Hex, but that would have been another pick if I did. And you'll see, I just hit Tier 3. I'm still researching Adept Training, but it'll, it'll get there. Nothing here, but I did build a Tinker. Tinker is definitely a questionable third hero in this spot. He's a great hero, great in a lot of instances. Not in all instances, though. I picked him up because I wanted to keep this pressure on, and the Tinker is great for that. Especially against a human player with this army, if I can set up a factory and kind of just push and pull and keep him busy behind, with a factory behind me, then I'll buy a lot more time. Right. So that's, that's my thinking in picking up the Tinker here, because I just... I was still behind in my, my Bloodlust tech. I knew I was ahead of him. <clears throat> but I wanted to keep the pressure up to really get the jump. And then I threw the factory down so, so close to him with my army behind it, and he takes it out immediately. So the entire thinking behind getting the Tinker is thwarted by my own poor judgment in placing it so close to the human player. Now, all of a sudden, the sustained pressure I was hoping to build with the Tinker is gone. And he's able to push me away pretty pretty effectively. So, you'll see, I, I, I guess I go in a little bit. I try and do a little more damage. But there's not much that can be done. I don't want to overcommit. I don't want something silly to happen. So I pull back and I thought, I'll check his expansion. Because I still hadn't checked. It was possible that he had it. But his, his expansion, or sorry, his tech timing looked pretty far ahead for someone who had also fast expanded. He would have had to have a, a lot of void income. And I guess he, I did see a Shredder at some point, but I don't know. I, I just had a feeling there wasn't one there. I went to scout anyway, and I was correct. And, and again, I have watched this, this replay before. So this was what he power crept initially. So I guess he, he must have come here to power creep and then seen me with this farm while I was creeping this and then come down to harass me here, and that's when I hexed him. <clears throat> anyway, I saw there was no expansion. I came back to his base. Again, not a lot of damage I can do. The Arcane Tower and Guard Towers are going to do a lot to me. But keep him busy. Another another awful pocket factory. It just It's so close to his stuff. I should have thrown it maybe here. Anywhere with trees and buildings and tight, tight, narrow places that make it difficult for melee units to get to them. Melee units such as Militia, of course. By putting it here, it's so easy to surround with footmen and Militia that it's vulnerable. I'm not able to defend it because towers are are right here, so I can't really engage any fight here. I should have thrown it back here or maybe over here. Luckily, he, he was off creeping, so I, I managed to kill his vault. I came in here. I thought, this is committing. I know I'm going to have to teleport out, but I thought I would have a little more time. Unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't get to do any damage once coming in here. So all it did was cost me a teleport and a headhunter. So uh, after getting the vault, I probably should have run away. He managed to get a kill, but I bought some time. I forced him to run back into his base. He's still here. You can see I've saved a couple units, and now I'm about ready for my push. I built one demolisher just because I thought it would be nice to get some siege damage on him, start forcing a fight from a distance. I'm getting fortified defenses just in case he tries to do any crazy footmen pushes or sneak around because I'm feeling pretty comfortable right now and one of the main ways he can rocket back into the game is taking out my burrow. So this is kind of an insurance policy. I don't need it. The fight has been at his base the whole game as I, because I wanted it to be, right? I, I chose to keep him back and, and keep the pressure on. So I, I really am not feeling vulnerable, but it's good to be safe. And I had the resources because my macro wasn't up to par and because I'm at 50 food. <clears throat> I now have a couple shaman out. One, two, this will be a third. I think three is enough. I don't get any more than three. And you'll notice I'm hiding these units when I take out the farm because I don't want him to know that I have bloodlust until he has to fight me head on with it. Meanwhile, I come down here with my shadow hunter 
to place a tiny great hall because I'm ahead right now. I've managed to get an army, which I know is going to be hard for him to deal with because Bloodlust is so powerful. So I thought, I'm going to throw it down. And sometimes, like, it's very questionable that he decided to try and expand here. I guess he was thinking it would be sneaky and I wouldn't check. <clears throat> and he didn't have time to go here because I kept so much pressure on him all game. <clears throat> I came here because I didn't have time to go and creep this one, not to mention he would have seen me going. That would have bought him a lot of time for me to run there, run back, and then hit. So I just came immediately to place it as close as possible. I wanted to maintain pressure. And I see this, so I, I attack his one peasant there with my Shadow Hunter. I take out the farm with the rest of my army. He cancels, and I'm going to place my tiny Great Hall. And then I'm going to go attack. There's a kill. There we go. So I have, you know, nothing nothing too flashy. A level 1 Torn Chieftain, a level 1 Tinker, um, and a level 3 Shadow Hunter, who's doing pretty well. I believe I got level 2 Healing Wave, not level 2 Hex. Um, you definitely get Hex at level 1, but later in the game, Healing Wave is just so massive. And you definitely get that level 2 and level 3. At least I would argue that's what you should do. So he's... Oh, oh I spoke too soon. Or <clears throat> oh, never mind. Never mind. Sorry about that. Here is a Vault. He's trying to rebuild it, and you see I catch a Shredder. So I know he's crept down south. That's where he must have been while I was harassing in here. <clears throat> and he's rebuilding his vault, and we engage. And he's completely off, caught off guard by this bloodlust. This fight is not going to go well for him. He does have a good base, three towers, so I can't... <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to, to win the game here, especially if he, if he plays well. You see, the footmen just, just melt. The footmen can't do anything to my army. And I have my demolisher here sieging the main just to put some pressure on him. I ran, run my mount, er, Torn Chieftain away just in time to, to get away alive, which is great. Um, I, I kind of like my play of sieging the castle. Maybe I should have picked the vault or the altar of kings instead. <clears throat> Either way, I like slowly sieging a base when you're attacking with an army you know is going to hold. Like, I, I knew I was going to win this fight. He, like, he could wait it out and play the long game, and I haven't necessar necessarily won the game. But coming into this fight, I knew I had the stronger army, and I knew if he was going to win, it was going to be a long fight. So bringing in just one demolisher to stand back and start sieging the castle or start sieging some key buildings during a, or over the course of a long battle I think is a great play because it forces you to start repairing. It means the militia are now... You know, it causes problems. <laughs> but I started doing that, sent my tower or my demolisher within range of the towers, and it goes down pretty quickly. <clears throat> He's forced to pull back. I've got a couple headhunt three headhunters, three shaman. I managed to focus down the mountain king, and I use purge. So purge is also a great spell that is very much underused, and if you go shaman, it's great against humans. So even once he starts getting spellbreakers, if he does, I'm gonna turn bloodlust off and use it for purge because I can just purge the water elementals, and that really weakens a significant part of the human's army. Purge also was used here to force a teleport. Of course, he would he would have run away, but I purged him, and he had to teleport because I would have caught him. So I'm taking down another arcane vault. <clears throat> I'm not able to break into his base here. I decide I'll, I'll take some damage from the towers, but ultimately these are going to hold me off. I'm sieging the altar. Probably not necessary, but I figured why not. I needed to heal my heroes so you can see. Here's my Torn Chieftain. Uh, no, just a salve on the Tinker. I didn't even have an extra salve, I guess. Oh, I just didn't use it. So I'm kind of, this is a waste of time really, I don't think I need to be doing this, but I do manage to take out the altar. He comes with both his heroes, gets a kill on one headhunter, gets a kill on a second headhunter, I believe, yeah, and then I teleport out. So I should never have stayed to kill that altar, that was completely worthless. Time was wasted, I could have been creeping, or shopping, or regrouping, or healing. He lost 180 gold in an altar, which he doesn't even have a hero down to resurrect. So it, like, it's not pressing for him to rebuild that. And he managed to get two head under kills and force a teleport. So that was, that was a huge loss for me. That was poor decision making. <clears throat> and definitely helped him climb a little closer into this game. But my expansion is now running. I was late on building peons, but, but it's up. And you'll see I'm now putting down three bestiaries just because 
I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to win now. I have the resource advantage. I have map control. I have him pinned in his base. So I'm gonna wait till I have enough gold to jump over. I'm, and then once I'm at 80, or sorry, once I'm able to go to 80 food with these two burrows, I'll jump straight straight there by building as much air units as I can from the, the beast areas. That was my my solution at this point. Siege him out from the front and then get air in behind him. So that you can see that's what I'm doing. Just being patient like I like I always preach. Don't rush into bases. Just play the long game. Force them to make the decision. And I just... Uh, I wait. And I wait. I have turned Bloodlust off from my Shaman. Because I, I don't need to use Bloodlust to win any fights right now. And I want to use it effectively against Water Elementals. But I did manage to see Griffins. So Griffins are not great for this army to deal with. Thankfully, I was ahead and just immediately queued up a bunch of bat riders, and he's in trouble now. So that's that's another thing, right? I was ahead. I knew I was ahead. I was dealing a lot of damage and keeping him down, but it's important to still be proactive. I built these well in advance. I didn't even know he was going for griffins necessarily. I just <clears throat> wanted to have the ability to build any unit because I knew I'd have the gold for it. I knew I had the time to set up for it. <clears throat> and I would be prepared. This is just another almost similar insurance policy as when I got reinforced burrows. It's just I need to have everything on hand and I'm able to provide that now. So I, <clears throat> as soon as I introduced it, it, it worked out because he did have a griffin aviary here and he's, he's pumping out griffins. So the fight comes. I do have bloodlust still turned off, which is a mistake. He goes straight for my tanker. I use a heal. I should be purging that water elemental. But I first turn on Lust and there, purge the water elemental. I'm gonna lose this headhunter, throw down a factory, but that's not great in this fight. My demolisher is still sieging the main, and look, it's starting to force his hand. It's not engaged in the fight, it's just it's something he's gonna have to deal with at one point or another. His griffins are looking pretty good, he's got four of them, but I have three bats on the way. And even though. I'm not going to have enough to kill all four. It's it's very helpful for me, of course. So, he kills my factory, which is good. I waste bloodlust on my bats, but it's okay. I managed to kill one and get another one very weak. And now it's um, the Mountain King and two bat riders against my two heroes. But I'm still feeling very comfortable, right? I've, I've pinned him to one base. He can't have a lot of production. I know he doesn't have a lot. He just wasted a lot of resources repairing his main. Let's check how much that cost him. Oh, I guess he's still got a reasonable amount. But but even then, one, one Griffin Aviary and one Arcane Sanctum is not enough for him to compete with the income I have and the production I have. I'm feeling super comfortable at this point in the game, despite his Griffins being out. And it's just a matter of being patient, right? The only way I can possibly lose at this point is if these two griffins and this Mountain King win the game. Because as soon as this is matched by my army, he's just going to become completely enveloped because then I'll, I'll produce so much faster than he will. And it's very unlikely that he will be able to use these two griffin riders <laughs> to, to win the game. So I'll speed it up a little bit. Oh, I'm watching from his perspective. I didn't even mean to do that. So I'm back here, and you'll see I'm, I'm just regenerating some mana. I'll use the bats to kill that farm. At this point, I know three bat riders and some wind riders will be enough. You usually need, if he's got a lot of griffin riders, then you probably don't need to get many wind riders. You should focus on more bat riders. But in small numbers, wind riders do very well against griffins. So I, I, I mix them up. They also obviously have much more viability against every other unit the human might have. So I catch him here, manage to hex the Mountain King. I'm sure I'll use the Bat Riders at one point or another. Purge coming in handy again. I use it twice to snag a Mountain King kill there. Notice I'm not using Bloodlust. My Shaman is only being used for Purge. Finally use the Bat Riders. And, and now I believe he's, he's got to leave the game soon, right? He's got to. I'll waste more time. You see I send one... Uh, Wind Rider up to scout. There's no expansion. That's good news for me. I'm pretty confident he hasn't had the time to go all the way north to creep. If he did, good for him, but I'm going to be able to 
to win the game either way. So I, I stay here, regroup, and I'm just going to push in. Now I'm at 74 food. So I should be at 80. 74 is not bad. He's at 37. There's, there's just no coming back for him. I'll pull down, take the fight here. Just, just beat him down. There's nothing he can do. The Archmage is completely inefficient in this kind of fight because Purge is just makes water elementals into free experience for me. I just I run over. Notice, even at this point in the game, even when I know I'm so far ahead, I still am not engaging within tower reach, right? I came snuck around, engaged him in the back, and only now that he has almost nothing left do I risk coming within range of the towers. Purge. Water Elemental's more, more health, and he says good game, good game. Then, uh, Cito, I apologize for my poor pronunciation. Well played, sir. So that was a good game. I hope you enjoyed it. It's definitely not a strategy to emulate. Don't don't go into a human versus orc game or an orc versus human game thinking headhunters and a shadow hunter is, is a really strong approach. But I think it's it's a good game that showcases decision making and. <clears throat> making the most of the situation you're in. So thank you for watching. Let me know what you think, and have a great rest of your day.